This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with still images in Apple Final Cut Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short excerpt, I'll show you how to use keyframes inside Apple Final Cut Pro to animate still images, both in straight lines and curves. So let's put the playhead one second in here, right about there, close enough. That's where I want my animation to start. When I brought the image in for Ken Burns, we left spatial conform set to fit so I could see the entire image. When I'm doing the animation myself, I need to set this to none so I can see the entire image at full resolution. And the reason is, if the scale gets to be greater than 100, the image is going to get blurry. Because I want to retain as much crispness and focus as possible, I want to make sure that my scale is always at 100% or less. So I'm going to scale this so I can see the entire edges of the image right about there. Set it, oh, let's set it to 57 is fine. I like rounder numbers. It's just because I'm obsessive that way. That's not the way to edit. Now I've set the scale. Because I want to animate as we tilt up this waterfall, that which is going to be changing is the position. So I go up to transform position, click this diamond right here, and set a keyframe that my starting position at one second in is going to be, let's go to the Y value and just drag down. I'm going to start here at the base of the waterfall, right there. And we'll pull it over just a bit, right about there. Then at the end, here at eight seconds in, move the playhead. I, because I have, up, 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 don't do that, forgot one. Then the other thing I want to do is I want to change the scale. So I'm going to set keyframes for scale. Go to eight seconds in, give or take. And because I've already set keyframes for position and scale, I don't have to set them again. As soon as I change one of those parameters, Final Cut will automatically set a keyframe. And now we're going to roll back up to the top. Right about there. And I'm going to pan over. And I'm going to zoom in. Whoa! Right about there. So now I have a keyframe that starts, keyframe that ends. Let's just take a look at it. It starts a second in and it starts zooming in. Wow, that's fast. Moving up the, the waterfall and comes into a nice easy landing. Except if you notice, see how it sort of settles and kind of bloops? That's because Final Cut has a problem with ease in and ease out with two different parameters. How do we fix that? Well, first I have to select the clip. Go to Transform and click this icon, which allows us to see the motion path. Change the settings so I can see the entire motion path. Looks like 25% will work. And I see two keyframes. This is, the end, this is the starting keyframe, and this is the ending keyframe. Notice as the image moves, we're transitioning. I got to do it with the arrow key. We're transitioning from the first keyframe to the second keyframe. So the way we fix this is right mouse click or control click on the ending keyframe and set it to linear. Now, as we watch this, let's fill the frame and turn off this by clicking done. Spacebar, freeze, and it slowly leaves and scrolls up and comes into a landing at the top without that bloop. The other thing that we can do that we can't do with the Ken Burns effect, again, let's turn on this and go back to 25%, is if I hold the Option key down and click, Option click, on the motion track itself, I can have this create a curve. Option click. Now that may be more of a curve than you want. Again, Shift Z to get it to fill the frame. Go back to here. And now our waterfall is moving as our drone drunkenly climbs up the face of the cliff and we get these shifts moving around. We can adjust the curve by clicking on a keyframe and grabbing the Bezier control points to change the shape of the curve. Hold Option and Command down at the same time and I can move one side of the curve. 
hold the shift key down, you can move it in one direction or constrain the angles. So the modifier keys can all apply to these Bezier control points. Play with them on your own. The one that I use the most is Option and Command, or Control click on the control point and say, I want to link the handles or I want to break the handle. Breaking the handle means that I can move one side without the other side being affected. So Ken Burns is easy. Animation gives us control, and because we can turn on and off, ease in and ease out, it solves some of that blippiness that we see coming into a landing, especially on a close-up. I tend to use ease out as it starts and linear as it comes in, just because I avoid that wobble at the very end. But what happens if I want to have an object move on top of another object? Although we could, theoretically, do it inside Final Cut, it's just a real pain. We need another option, and that option is motion. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with still images in Apple Final Cut Pro. For the complete version of this training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 346. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software, and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.